In this video, we will start talking about prokaryotic DNA replication, and we start with the initiation step. We will focus on the origin unwinding stage of the initiation. This is also referred to as DNA melting. I will split the initiation stage into two parts. The first part is the origin unwinding, which is this video, and the second part will be the replosome assembly. Before we dive into the origin unwinding, I will give you a quick recap of the DNA replication origin structure of a bacteria. I discussed the origins in much more detail in the previous video, so if you're looking for details, please watch that. A quick recap of the origin is that it contains these three directional repeats that are 13 nucleotides in length which form the dual region, also known as DNA unbinding element. In the proximity of the region is a segment called DNA trios. Following the trios, we have regions called R1, R2, R3, and R4, which are nine nucleotides in length. In between these regions are other nine nucleotide long sequences, which differ slightly from these main regions, one, two, three, and four. Next to the R1 is this sequence, which specifically recruits a protein called integration host factor protein. One last thing to note is that the regions on the left of R2 are directionally oriented towards the dual region, and the regions from R2 until the R4 are all oriented away from the dual region. And starting from the R1 until the R4, this entire section is called DNA-A assembly region. So the main parts of the origin are these LMR repeats in the dual region, and then the trios region, and then the DAR. The second main thing that we need to recap is the DNA-A initiator protein. Again, we also discussed this in much more detail in the origin structure video. Just briefly, the DNA-A protein has four important domains. Domain 1 forms the oligomers. Domain 2 is a flexible linker. Domain 3 can bind single-stranded DNA, and it is also an ATPase. And finally, domain 4 binds the double-stranded DNA. Specifically, domain 4 binds these high-affinity regions 1, 2, and 4 in the DAR. Region 3 is not really high affinity. Domain 4 also binds these internal regions, but not as readily as 1, 2, and 4. We will talk about this domain 4 functionality later in this video. So now that we have our basic ground covered, let's talk about the origin unwinding. There are two main models to go about thinking of the origin unwinding. One is called a two-state model, and the other is called a loopback model. Let me introduce them quickly, and then we will dive into the details. The two-state model suggests that there are two different DNA-A oligomerization states. What this means is that in the final step of origin unwinding, there is a DNA-A oligomer present at the DAR region, which is associated with the double-stranded DNA. This is the first state. And then there is another DNA-A oligomerization that occurs at the new region which occurs in the context of single-stranded DNA. And this is the second state. Now, in contrast, according to the loopback model, there's only one DNA-A oligomerization state, but it invokes a folding or looping of the dual element. Visually, what this means is that there is a DNA oligomer that assembles at the DAR, and when the origin unwinds at the dual, the dual folds back onto the DNA-A oligomers at the DAR. There's a good amount of evidence for both of these models. The usage of these models probably depends on the context of protein concentration, origin structure, and a bunch of other things. In any case, let's take a deep dive into these two models. We will start with the two-state model, and let's begin with state one description. The focus of the origin begins with the R1, R2, and R4 regions because they're high affinity sites for DNA-A protein. The domain 4 of DNA-A protein recognizes these regions and binds to it, which means that in this representation, the farthest domain is the domain 1. And I will color the domain 3 red just to signify that these are the starting DNA-A protomers. More specifically, the DNA-A ATP binds better at these sites, but ADP works just fine as well. So the first step is the binding of DNA-A at these high affinity regions in DAR. DNA-A protein actually comes with a helper protein, which is called DIA. -A. 
it can either come in a DNAa dia pre-complex or it can bind to the DNAa after it is bound at the DAR. The order of events in this case is not that big of a deal. By the way, DIA stands for DNAa Initiator Associated Protein. Now, why do we care about DIA? Well, it turns out that DIA can form tetramers. And if DIA can form multimers or tetramers, then it can also form DNAa multimers, since DIA is bound to the domain of DNAa. This sort of association is called the linkage effect of DIA, and this drives the DNAa oligomerization. So let's understand this linkage effect visually. Since multiple DIA can come together, it can force the aggregation of DNAa proteins at the DAR. It is like a crowding agent. Once this DIA forms multimers, it can further force the DNAa oligomerization at the DAR. Recall that there are many internal sites at the DAR that are low affinity sites for DNAa. Once this DIA-mediated linkage is forced, more DNAa is recruited at the DAR and it occupies the low affinity sites. And these new DNAa proteins also have DIA associated with them. So DIA further stabilizes the DNAa complexes at the DAR region. This mechanism of DNAa association is probably concentration driven. This binding of DNAa complexes at DAR also correlates with the binding of IHF at the IHF recruiting sequence near region one. And this completes the state one of the two-state model which is based on the double-stranded DNA recognition and binding. The transition now to the next state depends on the IHF, which assists in the DNA unwinding of the DO region, which is just upstream of the R1 site. The unwinding or DNA melting is caused because IHF binding causes a 120 degree bend in the DNA. The unwinding then allows DNA oligomerization into the dual region, and that is the second state. Let's get a bit more concrete and see what this 120 degree bend actually does. I will start the visualization by emphasizing that the binding of IHF causes DNA torsion, which is a fancy word for change in DNA topology. All this change occurs in the backdrop of a stable state one which consists of DNAa stably bound to the DAR region at both low and high affinity sites. This state one is also stabilized by DIA. Because DAR is stably bound by DNAa proteins, it is really difficult to unwind the DAR. So the IHF mediated topological change unwinds the dual region since it is not bound by any proteins. And also that dew is very AT rich so it is easier to unwind. Now, keep in mind that there is a trios region that overlaps a bit with the dew. So the trios and the LMR repeats become exposed as single strands of DNA after unwinding. And these become the target of binding by the DNAa ATP molecules by the domain three. In contrast, remember that DAR regions are bound by domain four. So in this picture of single-stranded DNA binding at DU, I'm not showing domain 4 for simplicity. Now, as this occurs, DIA may dissociate away from the complex. We will discuss this exact mechanism of DIA dissociation in the next video. Anyways, this dissociation of DIA enables a steady state transformation, which is in a forward equilibrium to move into the replosome assembly step. To understand what is happening in this, you have to note that the domain 1 of DNAa can form an oligomer with another DNAa domain 1. So essentially, DNAa can dimerize. So once the DIA is gone, the domain 1 of these DNAa proteins can interact with each other. This is a highly dynamic state, and this is possible because of the flexible linker domain 2. One last thing. The domain 3 interacts with the LMR motif, especially on the T-rich part. Alright, this assembly of DNAa on the origin completes the second state of the two-state model, which has a single-stranded DNA protein complex, whereas the first state is on the DAR region in a double-stranded DNA protein complex.
This is how the two-state model posits origin unwinding, which then leads to the recruitment of HeLa cases and other proteins needed for a replisome assembly and continuation into DNA replication. Now let's switch gears and talk about the loopback model. The initiation of the loopback model is exactly the same as the state one of the two-state model, which is until this topologically changed state of the origin, leading to the due unwinding. For clarity, I will quickly draw out the steady state where due is unbound. In the loopback model, the DNA A proteins do not oligomerize into the due region. This is in strong contrast to the two-state model, where oligomerization proceeds from the trios into the due region. In the case of loopback model, it does not. What happens instead is that the melted due region folds back. What this means is that the single strands from the due region contact the DNA A protein present on the DAR. This contact means that the domain 3 of DNA A are associating with the due region while it is bound to the DARs at the same time. Once again, this is possible because of the topological change created by the IHF protein. And this leads to the formation of a stable single-strand DNA and protein complex, which is ready to recruit HeLa cases and other factors. Before we end here, I want to point out some of the amino acids involved in these interactions. The double-strand DNA binding of DNA A domain 4 is occurring through a helix turn helix domain, which contains arginine residues that can scan the major and the minor grooves of the nine mer repeats. The domain 1 oligomerization and sometimes domain 3 head-to-tail oligomerization involves the interaction of arginine residues. Domain 3 of DNA A protein binds the single-stranded DNA at the due region because of specific arginine residues as well, and some valine residues. So arginine seems to be a very crucial amino acid to mediate all these interactions. And that is all for this origin unwinding video. In the next one, we will discuss the replosome assembly.